the decision to fly the late Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Bolanya, to Seattle in the U.S. to receive specialized treatment attracted criticism from a section of Ugandans living in the diaspora. So every patient who is going to benefit from taxpayers' money is supposed to be cleared by the medical board to seek treatment abroad. Because the, the guidelines indicate that the patient should only go abroad when that service is not available in the country. We find that there are Canadians who are treated in the same hospital where Jacob was. I don't think the reason is because Canada's health care system has collapsed. The reason is because you must look for the best. But unfortunately, the privilege of receiving this health care seems to be reserved for government leaders and those in affluent positions. Even with the law in place, Dr. Luswata is quick to point out that the increment in the number of people seeking medical treatment abroad is a clear indication of a lack of trust in the country's health care system. Many Ugandans are away from the leaders when they see such things happening. They, they even get this mentality of thinking that maybe doctors in Uganda cannot treat anything. Somehow we feel that our facilities out, the facilities out are better. This lack of trust has been caused by the absence of specialized medical personnel, medicine and other medical equipment in the country's health centers. You know you have a very big issue of supplies in the hospitals. You know, hospitals some hospitals are there but they don't have the equipment. They don't have uh, the drugs are not there. And a very low budget that is allocated to, to health. And of course the corruption in the health centers. The situation is compounded by government's failure to hire the available specialists in order to make use of their skills. Some of the leaders in government will tell you that I want to go and get treatment from South Africa or in USA because uh, the kind of doctor or specialist I need to handle me is not in the country. The truth is that we have almost, actually more than 80% of the specialists. I was referred to Nairobi, having spent over one week in Gulu. In Nairobi, I found a Ugandan, a Professor Godfrey Nserekolule. He was my doctor. Whereas government has a vision of building specialized hospitals, its failure to deliver on this promise has further weakened the country's health system. At this Lubawa hospital, it was started in 2019. By this time, maybe it could be completed because the money was there. The parliament passed this money and said, let us give the money to, for our hospital, but it is not there. So the issues are corruption. The implementation bit is, is lacking. The commitment is not there. Whereas the state is providing some solutions, questions are being asked about whether this can reverse this trend. Do we just lament? Because the, the people who are lamenting the most need to, 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 to tell us and to advocate for what needs to be done. But the Ministry of Health also points out that plans to strengthen the country's health sector are already afoot. If you look at the ministerial policy statement, is about 400 billion to cater for the increment of the various health workers. Uh, we, ha we are acquiring a number of equipment. These include uh, linear accelerator machines for cancer care. Uh, I was informed that the Cancer Institute is going to acquire a PET scan in the coming financial year. To uh, these are some of the services people seek abroad. Joyce Nakato, NTV Weekend Edition.